Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real, and I'm your host, Bob Gallagher. Joining me in the studio today, we have Neil White with Lair Realty Partners. Uh, Neil covers the Norfolk County and surrounding areas. Welcome to the show, Neil. Hey, thanks for having me, Bob. So why don't we talk a little bit about uh, what you're doing in real estate, You know how you're working with buyers and sellers, and then we can kind of talk about where the real estate market is headed. Because a lot of people have a lot of questions out there right now. Yeah, I <laughs> bet. I bet. It's a very um, fast-paced market right now, mm-hmm. especially for buyers in particular, sellers as well. Um, you know, it seems to me like you, you put your house on the market today and it's gone like the next day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the same day. Yeah. So it's nice. Uh, you, you get a, a listing presentation and, and you can promise a seller client mm-hmm. um, a house being sold in a, in a certain amount of time. So right. I think it's a good advantage to have in this market as a realtor. Uh, for a seller client, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, for buyers, it's it's um, it's more coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to prepare them for a market that is competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a good word for it. it that's what it is. It's um, you know you got to be you know only one person gets the house, and, mm-hmm. and you have to live up to the standards of of, of what the market bears. So. Um, you put yourself in a situation, you put an offer on a house. Um, if you're a first time home buyer in particular, you have to realize that you might be going up against their a, a 20% down. Mm-hmm. Somebody that already bought a house, mm-hmm. they might have sold a house and now they're in a different situation. They have a lot of cash behind them. You might right. be dealing, competing with a cash buyer. Mm-hmm. And as you know, as a mortgage person, when you're a 3% down buyer competing with a cash buyer, it's difficult. Right. Right. And there's only, there's ways around it. I mean, you can waive a home inspection. I don't, typically would recommend that mm-hmm. um, unless it's you know somebody a contractor that knows what they're doing mm-hmm. but other than you know you could you could drop the home inspection uh, you know now if you drop it, the home inspection it, you can still do one right you just can't right. you go could, back you, to the you seller could do one well see the problem is if you're competing with a cash buy mm-hmm. even if you a seller is going to sit there and say i'll even take a, an offer for less money mm-hmm. a little bit less money mm-hmm. and have to waive a, a home inspection altogether then have a home inspection and then hope that it appraises after the inspection negotiation is completed. Right. So accepting a cash buyer from a seller standpoint, even if it's a little bit less money, mm-hmm. might be more comfortable for them. Right. So it could be the safer bet. Right. So yeah. you could put an escalation clause as a buyer, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, let's go $10,000 above the list price. There's no way we can lose, right? Mm-hmm. That's what the buyer is thinking. They don't understand that. Well, yeah. You could win. You might have the highest price of the three offers. Let's say there's three. Mm-hmm. You might have the highest price, but as far as the best choice for the seller, they mm-hmm. want to make sure that the offer appraise the accepted offer appraises. Right. They, they don't want it to go three weeks into the deal and then find out that the whole thing gets blown up because the appraisal came in low. Right. And you can't. Then they have to put it back on the market and they're at square one again. Right. So you just have to. And it depends on location. As you get closer to Boston, there's a lot more cash than as you get out to the suburbs. Mm -hmm. There's a lot less of it. And and when you're going for a single family home, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say cash is necessarily your main competition. That's worst case scenario. Right. Um, If you're, of course, if you're a buyer broker and you have a cash client, (laughs) that's always a nice situation, (laughs) right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But predominantly as a as a 28 year old male Mm -hmm. um i deal with a lot of younger buyers Mm -hmm. that need financing right so i just like i like to educate them other other that from the Mm get-go just be you you already accomplished something by qualifying for a Mm pre-approval so congratulations to you but be prepared that you might have to put yourself in a multiple offer situation in this market Mm -hmm. with multiple houses right but just have the faith that the one that you get is the one that what you were supposed to get. Right. And that's how it usually works. Right. It's, it's unbelievable to me. I mean, I go through, I have buyer clients and we go through and we lose a house, we miss out on a house. Mm -hmm. And it it amazes me how resilient these buyers are. I'm the one discouraged and they sit there and they pick me up, Neil, go Mm -hmm. to the gym, Neil, it's okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to find another one. Mm -hmm. And then I do it for them in another situation. Right. Right. And we're working together. And then we find the one, we get the accepted offer, it appraises, you have your inspection, you sign your purchase and sale, and then you get to the closing, and then you kind of open your eyes and say, wow, this was meant to be. It's right. really cool. It's right. really cool. And they end up liking that house more than the first four they fell in exactly. love with. Exactly. Right. It's just how, it's almost just like it was meant to be. Right. You know, and it's pretty cool how that works in this business. Right. Yeah. And it, it's good that you're prepping them for that, because a lot of people, even today, think they're just going to go out, and if they offer a little more, they're going to get the first house that they want right. to get. Right. I mean, it's, it's important for any <laughs> buyer, any layman buyer, to understand that. 
it's not just price. Mm -hmm. There's so many more ways that you can make your offer. You could have an, you can go from FHA to conventional, right? Mm -hmm. You can go from 3% down to 15% down. Right. I mean, you could waive the home inspection. You can do inspection for informational purposes only. Uh, there's a lot of different ways. A, a sooner closing date. There mm -hmm. might be less money, but this, 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 there's no home sale contingency in this particular buyer. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's an advantage for somebody like my buyers. They don't own houses. Right. Well, obviously, home sale contingencies make your offer weaker. Right. Because then the seller has to accept an offer and they have to hope that you sell yours. Right. So when you're in a situation, if you, so you want an agent, right? If, mm -hmm. I was, if I was a buyer, I'd want an agent that would ask that question. Hey, mm -hmm. you have multiple offers. Do you have a home sale contingency? That's a very important question because then you know. If, they, if, the, if the realtor and the seller choose to answer that question and you get that information, mm -hmm. then you know you're one step ahead of maybe that one other offer that's out there because you don't have a home sale contingency. Then you can, then you can look at other ways to make your offer stronger. Maybe you could push out the closing date. Maybe, maybe the the seller wants a little bit more time, so you mm -hmm. can be more flexible. Maybe they want to close sooner rather than later, so you talk to your mortgage officer like yourself, and you say, hey, can we get a, can we get a commitment letter by this date so we mm -hmm. can close sooner? Right. And, and, and that's part of the communication. And didn't, you win, didn't your customer win a bid recently because you told the, the seller's agent that your buyer could be flexible? to give them time to find a house, and they ended up getting it because of that? Right. I mean, yeah, flexibility is a huge thing. Yeah. Um, f flexibility is valuable, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, not, it's not paper. It's not money. You're not making more money mm -hmm. off the house per se, right? Right. But it's convenience. People want, people want to be able to sit there and have the convenience of going through the process mm -hmm. without str as, with as little stress as possible, and that's valuable. Mm -hmm. Do you, would you rather have a more stressful deal and make $5,000 more on the house? Or would you rather have a less stressful deal and make $5,000 less on the house? Right. I'm not, not to say that price isn't important. Mm -hmm. Price is very important. People right. want, you know, I wouldn't blame anybody for trying to get the most amount of money for their house. It's part of the reason what I, why I do my shark stats, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But price is important. Flexibility is important, and it's, uh, it's valuable. Price is just as important. It's it's the whole deal as a whole. They're going to mm -hmm. look at the whole deal from your pre-approval strength to when if you're going to have a home inspection, what kind of financing you have, when you want to sign your purchase and sale, how much money you're going to put down with your purchase and sale, and when are you going to close. Right. And then they're going to look at all that, and they're going to look at all the prices too, and mm -hmm. they're going to sit there and say, okay, which one is the best value that we consider the best value for a house, mm -hmm. as well as the most convenient. Right. And when you can create an offer that's at the at the price that the seller is looking for mm -hmm. and the market bears mm -hmm. right a fair market value price mm -hmm. and you can make it in a multiple offer situation as convenient as possible and the only way you can do that is by finding out information mm -hmm. so you want somebody to be able to find out the important information you want to hire a buyer agent that's going to go and reach out to that listing broker and get that important information because without that important information you're going to have a really tough time in this market. Right. Um, so the goal is don't get discouraged. Mm -hmm. Expect that in this market you're going to compete against multiple offers mm -hmm. and expect that you might lose. Mm -hmm. But anticipate that you will win and you continue, to, you continue to put offers in and you have the agent ask the right questions until eventually you're in a multiple offer situation mm -hmm. and you came up with that right offer and it gets accepted. Right. Now, when you have a customer that's getting discouraged because they've been in multiple, multiple offer situations and haven't gotten the property, uh, what's your advice to them? You know, we every once in a while we'll, we'll hear from somebody, well, maybe I should just wait until next year or wait 12 months and then try again. What's your advice for people that are thinking that way? Well, it's a good question. Um, so it's kind of like it's a similar question to like, how, when you're when you're talking to a seller mm -hmm. and you want to like how can i make my house look more valuable mm -hmm. right so that it sells mm -hmm. well from a buyer standpoint what can i do to make myself more valuable mm -hmm. what can you do well there's a couple of things that you can do so what i would recommend is you don't give up you mm -hmm. never give up if you want to buy you have to be on top of the market and you have to be committed to staying on top of the market because as you know Something gets listed on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. No showings until Sunday. Mm -hmm. Open house on Sunday. Multiple offers on Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's gone on Tuesday morning. So you're unfortunately for the buyers right now, mm -hmm. you're not going to have an opportunity 
to go in that house, mm -hmm. right? Go in it again, go mm -hmm. in it again, and and decipher whether you want it or not. You really have to make that split second decision. Uh, split second decision. Mm -hmm. So you have to be prepared to be able to do that in this market if you want to win, mm -hmm. right? So what can you do? You, you stay prepared to be, you, you keep your pre-approval up to date, mm -hmm. right? You proactively, you see, a, you see a listing come on and, you're, and your buyer broker sees a listing come on. Right. You both are on top of it together. You see it's listed, there's an open house. So sometimes there's an open house listed on Sunday and I've gotten a deal through this. I've gotten a very good deal. They listed the, on, on MLS, they, they list the, the open house on Sunday, but mm -hmm. they didn't list no showings for the open house until Sunday. They just said open house on Sunday. Mm. So we were proactive and we went in, we asked for if we can get in showing before the open house we went in on friday mm -hmm. we sat down my client and i we saw the property my client liked it we went and had a bite to eat we filled out the offer we had it expired before that open house on saturday and we ended up getting the deal and mm -hmm. i'm more and i'm more i am 100 percent sure that in this market that if we had let that open house happen mm -hmm. that we would have lost right because there would have been too many offers to compete with either either because of how many offers there were, price or percent down, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, we're closer to, this was a deal closer to Boston. Right. So you're dealing with a lot more, yeah, stronger buyers. Right. 20% you know, down, 50% down cash right. buyers. So the only way that you're going to get an accepted offer in a market like that, mm -hmm. when you're a first time home buyer with financing, mm -hmm. is you beat the market. You're one step ahead of the market. Right. So we went in. You know, everybody wanted to go to the open house. We went in before the open house. We submitted the offer for the open house. We were lucky enough to get that offer accepted before they even had the open house. That's awesome. Yeah. And one of the other things that's probably worth pointing out, too, is that waiting till next year isn't necessarily going to help you. The likely outcome is higher rates and higher purchase prices. So all you really have done of cheated yourself right. out of a year's worth of equity you're gambling yeah you're cheating yourself out of equity you're gambling on what might happen instead of mm -hmm. what's happening uh, another another thing to consider is if you give up and you say i'll wait till next year well, you can wait till next year that's okay and and that's your your personal decision but you, uh, if you can find a house between now and next year from a buyer's perspective you know i talk mm -hmm. about sellers when should they list for their best interest you find a house between november in February mm -hmm. that you like and it's been on the market for 30 days it's mm -hmm. been on the market for 45 days guess what you're going to have an opportunity to do in this market mm. negotiate yeah and if you're a buyer and you can negotiate in this market you're a happy buyer yes you are <laughs> yeah because not saying. many of them get to do that anymore. I, I mean <laughs> it's so funny because I deal with a lot of buyers and it's like I'm trying to coach them to mm -hmm. get them the house mm -hmm. but it's almost like I'm coaching them like you gotta you gotta go higher mm -hmm. and and it's it's hard for them to understand well you're supposed to get me the house for you know you're supposed to get it for less we're supposed to go down no my job well my job is to get you the house and it, with the best terms and your best interest mm. but my goal is to get you the house right if i don't get you the house yeah if i never get you a house then why are you hiring me right right exactly i want to give out your contact info for anybody listening that's looking to buy or sell anywhere in the Norfolk County area and surrounding areas, uh, you should give Neil a call. Neil White with Lair Realty Partners. Best way to get him is a cell number, 508-685-4147. That number, again, is 508-685-4147. Why don't we talk about uh, shark stats because we're, we're getting low on time. Sure, I'd be happy to. How much time we got? Yeah, uh, we got a couple minutes left. Two and a half minutes. Two, left. two and a half minutes. Yeah. All right, shark stats. Um, so what I do is I do a weekly segment every Wednesday. It's on my Facebook page. It's Neil White Realtor. Uh, you'll see a little uh, my my name, my phone number, a little shark logo there. If you look it up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I do is I do a, a segment. It's about ten to twenty minutes long every week, and I and I pick a market, uh, just a local market, and I generally aim it towards Norfolk County, but I always ask if anybody ever has a, a, a town that they want me to do just to reach out and I'll do it. But what I do is I go through the statistics. I go through the statistic of what's happened in the previous month. Mm -hmm. um, what's under contract right now? What are the statistics look for that? The, the statistics for active listings. Mm -hmm. What happened last year in last year's market? How is it comparing to what's happening in this year's market? And then I'm using that information to anticipate what's going to happen within the months to come. I'm mm -hmm. trying to stay one step ahead of the market instead right. of one step behind it. Similar mm -hmm. to what I was talking about with the buyer in the open house. Right. So I'm trying to figure, I'm, I'm just trying to find a way 
that I can differentiate differentiate myself as a 28 year old man and say, I think I can I can offer you a service different mm -hmm. than say another realtor might. And not only that, I'm I'm building a resume with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had two listings and I've used it with the goal of. of what I was doing was to try to get the house sold for as much money as possible mm -hmm. with the ultimate goal of getting multiple offers because I feel like if you can get multiple offers from a seller standpoint, mm -hmm. so if you can get multiple offers on a house and mm -hmm. it's listed at X price, you get multiple offers. Let's say in this scenario, you ask for final and best and you have multiple offers. Every offer has a chance to come back by mm -hmm. tomorrow. They all come back and then you choose one. You're getting maximum value based right. on what the market bears in that right. case because they don't have a number that, that they're looking at anymore they're they're submitting their final and best on an emotional decision mm -hmm. which is what real estate is it's very emotional right but if you're a seller and you want to try to get the most amount of money out of your out of your investment mm -hmm. then you want multiple offers and that's what i'm trying to do for for sellers smart that's yeah. smart i'm going to give out your contact info again it's neil white with lair realty partners Cell phone number 508-685-4147. Again, it's 508-685-4147. Uh, you cover Norfolk County and surrounding areas. That's right. Right? Norfolk County surrounding areas. Right. And the, the site again on Facebook for, for so Shark Stats? It's Neil White Realtor. So when you go and look it up, Neil White, N-E-I-L-W-H-I-T-E, -E, mm -hmm. Realtor, you'll see my name. It'll be like half of a whiteboard, and you'll see a, a shark on the, on the Great. Facebook page. So take a look at it. Take a look at my page. Take a look at some of my shark stats, some of my previous sales. Um, I plan on being in the business a while, and I appreciate this opportunity very much, Bob. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on, Neil. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Get Real after this.